This video was brought to you by Loot Anime. It's everything you love about Loot Crate, but with an anime twist. Every month, you can get a box filled with all kinds of goodies based on your favorite anime. And the theme for this month is Demi-Human. So get yourself a box filled with all kinds of goodies from Tokyo Ghoul, Shonen Jump's Bleach, Twin Star Exorcist, and the highly popular One Punch Man. Click the link down below in the video description and use discount code NEOGAMESPARK to save yourself 10%. What's going on everybody? My name is NGS and thank you so much for clicking on the video. It's time once again for another installment of NGS Pickups. For those of you guys tuning in for the very first time, this is my somewhat regular video series where I go over all the pickups that I've acquired over the past couple of weeks. And thankfully we are back on track with the pickups videos Somewhat, uh, if y'all are unaware, usually when I do pickups videos, I like to get said month's pickups videos recorded, edited, and uploaded in the first week of the following month. But unfortunately, there were a lot of things going on in July going into August that everything has just been a blur for the past two months. Uh, so I didn't really get a chance to sit down and record July's pickup videos. So I said, you know what, I'll just let everything bleed over into August. Here we are in September, and we have all the pickups for the past two months and thankfully I've kind of slowed down on my pickups purchases as y'all know it's an ongoing battle for me to fight my video game movie comic backlog and the more and more that I buy things it just adds to it I've come to the realization that I'm never gonna complete it but I can make some strides in it and by that I mean not buying every single dang thing I see on sale so I've kind of slowed down a bit and I've been tackling more of my backlog. Uh, so what we have here is a couple of Blu-rays, some PlayStation 4 games, and of course some Funko Pop figures. We'll save those for the end because I know that's what y'all are really here for. Anyways, let's get on to the Blu-rays. Uh, we only have two pickups for this month. Uh, while I was browsing at Costco, y'all know me, I am a connoisseur of the Costco Blu-rays. And by that I mean every single time I go to Costco, I just see what their Blu-ray section holds because Costco, unlike many retailers, they cycle out their Blu-ray collections every couple of weeks. So if you only go shopping at Costco once every two months, they're going to have very different Blu-rays, at least mine in particular. In some cases, you'll get like reprints of really old special edition variants like Digibooks that you thought were sold out anywhere. So that's why it's always great to check out your local Costco because they might have special variants or they might have them really cheap, which is why I picked up these two. Now these two movies are Studio Ghibli films, um, and I've been kind of slacking on my Studio Ghibli Ghibli collection, mainly because they've been so gosh darn expensive. Studio Ghibli Blu-rays usually hover around $22 to $30, and for me that's way too expensive to pay for just a single Blu-ray movie with not a lot of features on it. Uh, so I usually like to wait until I see them come down in price. And when they come in down in price, boy, you better snag them all you can. So I have two of them here. Both of them were only $12.99. The first one is a Studio Ghibli classic. Everybody should have this in their collection. We have Princess Mononoke, one of the best uh, Studio Ghibli films. And the reason why this is still in the packaging is because I'm going to wait until around October to actually open this one up because I remember... When I first saw this movie, I think it was playing on Cartoon Network on the month of Miyazaki block. I know it was sometime during the fall season, so I have like a lot of good memories of watching this movie when it was kind of cold outside, when the sun starts going down at around 4 p.m. So I'm like a, a creature of habit with those sort of things. I like to get somewhat nostalgic with those viewings. So I'm gonna wait a couple of months until I can uh, properly open this. And by a couple of months, I mean one more month since October is almost upon us. And the second one here was my first Studio Ghibli blind buy. Normally, I like to see the Ghibli movies uh, when I can in the theaters, because they don't play too often. Uh, but this one was one that I skipped, but I'd heard nothing but good things about it. So I said, A, it's only $12.99, why not? I picked up The Wind Rises. Now, I'm not really gonna say a lot about it today because if you were on Twitter, if, you, if you're not following me on Twitter, make sure you do so. I went on a Twitter rant about this movie and I had some rather colorful things to say about it. It, it honestly is one of the worst Ghibli movies out there. I 
really don't see the appeal in it, but again, that's for another day. It's another video. If y'all want to see my full thoughts on this, comment down below and let me know. But yeah, I couldn't pass up Studio Ghibli Blu-rays for only 13 bucks, and Costco had a lot of other ones as well, so I'll probably snag the whole collection for around that price, which you cannot beat. $13 for a Ghibli Blu-ray? Great. Now moving on to the video games here. Only picked up four in the past two months. This one y'all already know if you are a fan of the channel. This is a Zero Time Dilemma for the PlayStation Vita. Now there's a story about this game and why I picked it up so late. Y'all know me, I am a huge supporter of PlayStation Vita. If there is a game that I'm looking forward to, I'm gonna talk about it on the channel. But there is a very, very, very convoluted story on why this game took so long to arrive in my place. Uh, if you wanna check that out, go look through my videos. I think the video is titled, my dilemma getting zero time dilemma something quirky like that but yeah the video is there if y'all want to see what went down now moving on to the playstation 4 games got uh three of them right here and the first one i believe is the very first pickup of the month we have dragon quest heroes let me see if i can get the subtitle right the world trees woe and the blight below yeah, imagine trying to sell this. Like, imagine you're a voice actor reading off for like a GameStop commercial. It's like, pre-order Dragon Quest Heroes, the world trees woe, and the blight below. Oh god, they probably did have to say that. Oh, my heart goes out to all of y'all. But yeah, if, if y'all know anything about me, you know I am not particularly fond of the Musou genre, the Dynasty Warriors style of games. I just can't get into them for whatever reason. It's just very repetitive for me and I'm like, nah, keep them away from me, which is why I don't play a lot of them. But I heard a lot of good things about not only this game, but Hyrule Warriors on the Wii U. So I said, you know what? Best Buy deal of the day, $20, Gamer Club Unlocked, got it down to like 17 bucks. I took the plunge on this and I gotta say, I'm pleasantly surprised with what I'm saying. It is a Musou game in the sense that, you know, you're killing hundreds upon hundreds of enemies, but it's paced differently and the way your characters control, they don't all control the same. So uh, I'm, I'm having a blast with this game. Uh, that's not to say that I am a fan of the Musou genre at all. I think I'm just gonna stick to the different kinds of games like this, Hyrule Warriors, you know, those type of games because you know, I played this and I played Pyre Warriors 3 and while they're better than my first Musou interactions, I still can't like, you know, I guess these are just the mindless games you play when you're talking in a group chat or something. But yeah, can't pass this up for only 17 bucks. I wish that it had some online co-op. I think that'd be pretty cool. There have been some rumors that the sequel has it. I don't know. Now, next up, we have another game here, which I actually did a discussion video on this. And it was one of the, um, really popular videos that I uploaded this year. And I'm of course talking about Street Fighter V. Now y'all are wondering, why would I do a video titled I'm worried about Street Fighter V, yet pick up Street Fighter V? Mainly because I got Street Fighter V at the price it should have been when it launched. I only paid $25 for this bad boy. $25 for this game, I think I picked it up mm, first week end of July, something like that, because I know they had a deal for this game. So considering that they finally put out all of the characters and they have the updates and all that stuff, the game is more or less complete. I know they probably have a couple of other things waiting in the wings, but yeah, only 25 bucks for this game. Y'all know me, I'm not the biggest fan of fighters, so I would not pay $65 out the gate. But I do like to play them casually with my friends. We just get together in a lobby and just screw around. So I wanted to pick up Street Fighter V, got it for a very, very, very reasonable price, what it should have been on day one. But we're not gonna get into that because as we all know, people like the damage control for things. Now, moving on to the last video game, and I, I don't need to say much about this any more than I already have. Game of the Year 2015, it would be my Game of the Year 2016 if I could give it to a complete edition. I'm of course talking about The Witcher 3 Wild Hunt. Comes with all the DLC, both expansion packs, and I, I gotta give it up to um, a subscriber of mine who actually gifted me Witcher 3 the day it came out on PC. You know, I, I sing his praises every day, played the game on PC, beat it on PC, loved it, but I never got a chance to play the expansions. Because when it comes to DLC, unless it's a game that I already invested hundreds of hours into, like World at War, I, I'm, I'm hard pressed to check out the DLC because I've heard mixed things about, you know, DLC expansions and all that. Some of them are good, some of them are wasteful, but CD Projekt Red doesn't disappoint. The expansion packs from personal 
experiences from friends of mine say that it's fantastic so I cannot wait to do that I started an entire new playthrough on PlayStation 4 and the best part about this is that I got this for free yeah Best Buy Gamer Club unlocked combined with a gift card that I got from trading in um, like the loose change from my car like that got this game for me for free which is fantastic because the game goes for like 50 bucks so yeah Witcher 3 Wild Hunt now moving on to what y'all really came to watch, the Funko Pop figures. What Funko Pop figures did I pick up this time? Well, I'm happy to report that I have a modest um, haul right here, only five Funko Pops. So we might as well start with the one that I actually did an entire video on. Shout out to my boy Austin. He actually uh, bought this for me because you know how fast these things sell out. And this is of course, Doctor Strange. Now this one right here is actually based off the uh, upcoming Marvel Studios film. Um, but the difference between this one and the one that they're going to release like to the public is that this one is the 2016 Summer Convention exclusive. And while they are releasing a regular Doctor Strange Funko Pop, this one has him doing his, um, uh, his incantation right there, which to my knowledge, the regular Funko Pop figure doesn't. Now, moving on to um, a Hot Topic haul that I had. <laughs> I went to Hot Topic, uh, I, I believe it was like the last weekend of July, with the main goal of purchasing a brand new Dragon Ball Pop. This one being Super Saiyan God, Super Saiyan Goku, which I have right here. But Hot Topic and oh, they know how to get me. They know how to get to the inner Funko Pop collector because not only did they have an entire wall of these guys, but they had almost every summer 2016 convention exclusive, not waiting for you with the other Funko Pop figures, but in the front as like an impulse buy for you to buy it like last minute. And what did I do? Not only did I buy a couple of those, but they got me with a buy one, get one 75% off sale. So not only did I pick up Super Saiyan God Goku, I picked up Ace from One Piece. <sighs> Rest in peace, my dude. Rest in peace. Gone, but never forgotten. Picked up uh, Luke Skywalker from Star Wars, of course. And you're looking at this Luke figure and you're like, oh, that's, that's a pretty nice Luke figure, but what makes him a summer 2016 convention exclusive, Neo? Well, if you uh, look close to the side, yeah, aha, uh -huh, yeah, oh uh, yeah. He's uh, missing a, uh, yeah one of these things he's, he's missing that oh yeah yeah talk talk about something to add to the collection right last but certainly not least we have one of the best parts from star wars the force awakens bb8 doing his patented uh thumbs up lighter which is really freaking dope so i got all of these right here for less than 30 dollars, which is fantastic hot topic shout out to y'all Anyways, you guys, those were my pickups video. That was my pickups video for the months of July and August. Uh, let me know what y'all picked up down below in the comments section. For me to you for now, my name is NGS signing out. And like always, I will catch you guys later. Peace.